Okay, welcome back. My name is Tim Davies, and today we're going to talk about alcohol over Christmas. And in this really, really short video, I'm just going to give you the three following points, really, which hopefully might help you out getting over uh, Christmas if you are maybe stopping drinking or maybe you have stopped drinking, okay? Because Christmas can be, as we know, a really delicate time. So the first point is you don't have to drink at Christmas, all right? It's only three days. We're going to talk a little bit about that. The second point is like what I do, where I take myself out to, what I go and do if I feel the need to drink. And the third thing I want you to concentrate on is, and we're going to talk about, is like next year and look to the future a little bit. And I'm going to give you a, a really powerful line that you can use next year, really, um, or well, even now, of course, but um, to help you through uh, real personal self-development. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not doing that. There are so many different people with different metabolisms and different relationships to alcohol. And it's all based in some kind of foundational trauma that we have from, from whatever it is. And, and I don't know what it is with you. And I will start talking at some point about some incredible stuff that's going to amaze you about what happened to me when I left the Air Force and how I was able to stop doing things I was doing without even trying to do them. It just, things just stopped. Like I was doing things and they just stopped. I used to, uh, you know, I used to bite my nails and my skin around the nails. It's called wolf biting, okay? And I'm going to talk to you about why that just stopped. Like I can never stop, it just stopped. I'm going to talk to you about that. Yeah, it's highly embarrassing, but fuck, we're supposed to be giving stuff back to each other, right? That's the whole point about humanity. We've got to be able to grow together else we allow everyone up there in government to, to run us and the whole thing goes kind of crazy. So, yeah, so the first thing then, Christmas, three days. And to be fair, if you're traveling down to Christmas and you're, you're traveling down on Christmas Eve, then, hey, be tired, go to bed early, don't drink, all right? That's the thing. Now, if you want to drink, of course, drink. I'm, I'm not saying anyone wants to drink, but, the, you know, you, you don't have to be up at night caning beers. When you stop drinking like I have over the last year, you, you realize that nothing good happens after 10 p.m. And it means you can leave any kind of part you're at because people then start talking shit. You can get in your car and you can drive home and you can have a cup of tea and then you can go to bed. It's really nice to be able to do that. I mean, I'm almost 50 now, so I understand if you're in your late 20s or something or your early 30s, then you want to be at the party, you want to be having a great time. And I get all that. I'm talking about the mature approach here. And I do feel for you if you think you still need to socialize with alcohol because when you realize you don't anymore, it helps. And also just be careful about substituting stuff in. That AMA, that Schiller, that heavy sugar stuff that you might substitute in this Christmas. You will get a sugar spike and you, that sugar spike then will end with a crash as well. And that crash can lead you to feeling pretty sad. That kind of brings me on to my second point then of you know, what I do when I, I feel like I, I want to drink in those situations. I have something planned, guys. Uh, and if you are like newly stopped drinking, and your anxiety is so high about Christmas, like what the fuck am I gonna do? Chuck a couple of crates of beer or a few bottles of wine in the back of the car uh, that's in your driveway or, or maybe in a bag that's just stuck there or in your garage or whatever, wherever you are. You're not, you're not opening it, you're not intending to drink it, but if the wife or the husband does say, I'm gonna leave you forever this Christmas, at least you can get yourself smashed up. You haven't got to worry about that anxiety that's gonna carry you through Christmas if you think, what if I really wanna drink and I can't get any because all the shops are shut? you got it in the back of the car, you're just not going to touch it. That's a tip from me. It works for me. It gets rid of that kind of anxiety. I've still got beers in my house. Not in my house. I've got beers in my garage. I've got crates of beers in my garage. That I've never, I was a beer guy, right? So I wasn't a wine or spirits guy. But I got, I mean, there's bottles of wine in the house. It just was never my thing. So I never drank it. So my wife, she'd be drinking. I'd be like, I don't want that wine anyway. I still smash into a few beers. And to be fair, when my wife is drinking, I still want to drink. If I see alcohol around, I still want it. But I look long on this and that brings me on to my third point really my third point is well going back to the first point christmas is only three days my third point is next year next year is another year and people tend to have these new year's resolutions and they don't tend to last in in january because they're unrealistic and a lot of those things that are unrealistic is the way that we speak to ourselves the self-chat if you want the self-talk one thing i realize is that my self-talk can be really brutal because i watch people who have brutal self-talk i watch you know david goggins or or you know joe rogan or whatever or, or jocko willink back in the day that kind of stuff you know and it doesn't work for me i i might want it to work i might feel like it should work i, I want to feel that like i can i can say you know get out there and hit the gym and you know no pain no gain all that kind of bollocks but the truth is i don't seem to react well to that what i seem to do now a lot better is I look at that self-care, all right? I look at myself as someone, uh, like, like, a, like a friend, and believe me, I hate myself on times, guys. You know what I mean? I think we all, 
I think that's the problem with alcohol. Alcohol is not really the problem. It's the individual that's the problem. And I can talk a lot more about this and I do a lot of work on myself with this. I was always the problem. Alcohol wasn't a problem. Alcohol just helped me deal with the problem. The problem was myself. And, uh, you know, whether it was anxiety, you know, I flew jets for 20 years did I not feel like I should be there? Probably. I probably felt I shouldn't be there. I didn't come from a great background when it came to, I mean, I failed my A-levels and this is not about me, it's about, it's about us. But I'm just saying that maybe I felt I was living a lie and I'm flying fast jets and I'm teaching people. Maybe I felt I shouldn't be there, which is ridiculous, of course, because now with hindsight and the people that have written to me and students that still write to me, and I, fly, I have my own flight school now, although in, on a computer game, um, a lot of guys tell me that they get a lot of benefit out of, out of me helping them out. So I know the way I'm, I talk to myself is, is not a very beneficial way. So what I say to myself now, guys, I try and coat in a bit of self-love, self-care, whatever you want to be. I don't want to be weird about it, you know what I'm saying? A good way of looking at next year, like for me, this is the way I look at it, is saying something along the lines of, you know, next year is supposed to be uncomfortable. And then whenever I want to reach for a drink or unhealthy food or I want to skip that gym session, I can think of that. Yeah, it's supposed to be uncomfortable, mate. Yeah, it's not supposed to be a year where you, you're able to eat all that bad stuff, whatever you want to eat. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. We know that ultimately our comfort lies in our, our ability to accept discomfort. So we have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And now we live in such times where that doesn't have to happen we don't have to be uncomfortable and and a lot of us aren't we eat what we want we drink what we want we do what we want smoke what we want we we go and have sex with whoever we want is you know whatever it might be and all i'm saying is if you want to sort of progress as i want to progress i just want to grow a little bit i'm not talking about um lecturing you here because i'm not about that guys and in the comments by all means you know hopefully you'll say you're not lecturing me tim you know i appreciate this and this is how i this is a, this is my take and this is my view on it right and then tell me your view in the comments because i get a lot of benefit from those comments um what i would say was um that phrase to me is quite a good one it's like this is supposed to be a little bit uncomfortable so at christmas when you're feeling fuck all i want to do is have a beer and if i have a beer all this pain goes away it will go away it will go away for that that half hour that hour that, that pain will go away and i know that pain I know that pain really well. And I'll experience that pain this Christmas. I'll experience a lot of pain being around people who are drinking and not drinking myself. And I know that, right? So I expect it. I've got things to do. As I said, I can go to my garage. I can do some press-ups. I can go listen to podcasts. I'm going to start an airplane up on my flight sim uh, that I teach, of course. I can do that. I don't have to be around those people. That's another thing I would say to you. If you said, Tim, how can I not get run over by a car? I'd advise you not to be around cars. It's the same thing with drinking. How can I not drink over Christmas when I stop? Well, try and be away from those people who are drinking. And that might mean that you go and watch one of those kids' films with the kids who are watching the film. Kids aren't drinking, right? Go and sit there and, and oh, I'll look after the kids. No worries, I'll look after the kids. And you sit there with a cup of tea and you watch Frozen for the 27th time. But you're not drinking. If you do drink at Christmas, and it does happen, and I understand it, because we're all on and off that wagon, you know, we all are. All I would say was maybe write down a little book about how you how you feel you're not going to write down about how i felt before i started drinking and fucked up my whole 16 month streak because my wife called me a dick and she was shagging the fucking boss or whatever you're not fuck that shit that's dumb we're, we're forward looking we're not rear looking now if you do start drinking over christmas because something something breaks you we understand it just just try and write down in a little book like how do you feel is it remorse is it regret and understand as well there's a lot of people like me if that happens to you you can hit the comments you know and i'll write back to you because i feel for you because i've been there where you've been there and i understand it um it seems to be these events that really push us for some reason and uh maybe because we want to fit in we want to accept ourselves in some way around other people and i guess you could look at other people wanting to do the same thing and they just haven't come to the realization that you've come to yet that the issue is with you, it's not with the alcohol. And so they carry on drinking. They haven't really worked out that they've got to do some work on themselves. And I, I wish you the best of luck if you have stopped drinking and you're going through Christmas. And as I said, know that there's some people with you, yeah? And that's important. That's how I get through it as well. And remember, on the 27th, it's fucking over, mate. It's over on the 26th. All you got to do is get through the 25th. And all you got to do is be there for people. Put on a face. Put on that mask, go in there 
be the happy dude. It's only for a day. Yeah, it's be uncomfortable. Yeah, fuck, suck it up. When it gets too much, leave the house. I'm just going to go and clean out the whatever. I'm just going to go and do this. I'm back in a minute. And that feeling will pass. You've only got to make it to like 9 or 10 o'clock and everyone else is going to go to bed anyway. If you're going to fuck your own Christmas up, fine, I get that. But, you know, we can work on that next year. Just try not to fuck everyone else's up just because you stopped drinking. You know, your choices aren't their choices. Don't be a dick about it, all right? You know what I mean? Hey, listen, next year, though, just try and consider that little phrase I just said there, that this next year is supposed to be uncomfortable. This year is supposed to be uncomfortable. That's a good phrase, really, I think, to use. So that when you don't want to go to the gym, you're like, okay, it's supposed to feel uncomfortable. I'm just going to go anyway, and I'm just going to do some skipping, some stretching, and then before you know it, you're lifting some weights and you're doing your exercise anyway. Or I really want to fucking drink. Yeah, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. Mate. And I think we really need to embrace that. I'm going to stop this now. We just need to embrace and understand the fact that actually it does need to be a little bit uncomfortable. Else society just degenerates into people doing what they want. Um, and it's embarrassing and we shouldn't be like that. I've recorded this video twice already. I'm walking up and down somewhere. It's never felt authentic, mate. That's all it was. It never felt authentic. Just felt like I was doing a fucking YouTube video. So look, I'm happy to be embarrassed. I'm happy to tell you things, embarrass myself, and hopefully, you know, you gain from that somehow. You know, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't do my school any good with, uh, you know, the boss of the school being quite open about this. But, you know, we've all got demons, right? And hopefully we can all kind of, uh, uh, kind of, you know, work those demons together. I think that's the best way. I know people were writing the comments, and I don't mind. Um, I thought this was a flying channel. What's all this kind of... Yeah, fuck it, I get it. Yeah, it's not a flying channel. Um, it's not a political channel. I talk about politics. Fine. It's uh, it's not a mental health channel. Um, I don't believe that. That term's been over years. I use mental wealth. Let's, let's, let's do it on mental wealth. It's, it's, a, it's a channel about me trying to help people out if I can. And um, it makes about 90 pounds a month. <laughs> Fucking love that shit. Honestly, it makes fuck all. Right. It's not about that anyway, is it, guys? It's not about that. It's not about making money out of YouTube. Crikey, those days are gone. Let me know in the comments what you think. And listen, also, if you are having a major snag on Christmas Day, I would check those comments on Christmas Day. And if you are having a snag, post something in the comments. I'll keep checking them like that. And if I can answer or I can help you some way, I will. All right? Hey, next year we'll do something else, huh? Trying to fuck it up, but if you do, I'm still there for you. Tim Davies, Five Shipping Comments.